Hello, it's Jim here at the Rileys. I have a Toyota Hilux uh, it's in for a DPF fault. Okay, I'm going to start it up. Put on the clutch, is it? Okay. See, we have an engine management light on there. Skid control light as well. Check engine, visit your dealer. Pre-collision system malfunction. Pre-collision be the the radar system. DPF full. Visit dealer. So he's just driven it uh, a couple hours down to me, and the um, so you can clearly say that a drive is not going to fix that. Some people say take it for a long drive. Okay, I'm going to use the Launch UK Eurotab 3. We're going to select Toyota. Do diagnosis. Uh, 16 pin Europe this is a uh, 2022 it's not from Russia it doesn't have a smart key yeah it's got radar cruise Do a high speed scan. See what items we have here that's faulty. Okay, we'll go through them one by one. P2463 particle filter. Particle filter, soda accumulation, soda accumulation. Back camera disconnected into history. Lost communication with the cruise control distance range sensor. Back camera, we've already looked at that one. Lost communication with the cruise control distance range sensor. Okay, so looks like it's just a straightforward block DPF. Go to data stream. See if we can find differential pressure. Pink one. Live data of the differential pressure. It's not terrible. Okay, so I'm just under the bonnet here. This is where we have the DPF pressure sensor. Get that off. Now we connect up our gun here. Squeeze the trigger, get the fluid sprayed in. So this is a, I think it's a 2.5 D4D, is it? It's got a blue on it. So I'll put about half of that into the system there, then we're going to start the engine up. And squeeze the trigger again, the engine running. It's just the DPF sits. Very close to the manifold here, I don't want to backfill it into the cylinders. So it's just safer to run it with the engine on. Take that out. Just let it run for a minute. Only the moisture come out, and we can reconnect it. Back up to the car here. Okay, we've put that on two millibars, and we'll watch it on a graph. See there, it's increased quite a lot, so there must be a fair bit of soot in there that's breaking down at the minute. When you put the fluid in the soot can start breaking down which can make even more of a blockage on the DPF temporarily there. So we hold the revs right up to 3000 RPM. We should see now that graph coming down 
as the DPF gets clean. You want to see that number there around about 50 millibars of pressure. this pedal depressor to hold the revs for me. Three thousand RPM there. Or thereabouts. We should get some white smoke coming out like that is vapor from the cleaning fluid. Okay, we're gonna now reset the DPF so we can reset the faults. Values are cleared. Now we should be able to clear the fault memory. So we did have this fault in a few different places. So as well as the ECM, we've got it in the OBD. So we're just gonna do a full clear from here. So I'm also going to do oil service reset for this because that can affect the DPF on these. Okay, so I seem to have cleared the DPF but it doesn't seem to have reset on here just yet. I'm going to take it for a test drive. If not, we might have to try a different computer on it. Okay, so we can see there the DPF is clean. We've only got sort of two to four millibars of pressure. We're not able to reset this light just yet. I'm going to have to maybe try a different diagnostic scan tool. Okay, we're going to try this one. Same thing again. Clear the DPF values. It's complete. Let's see if that's worked. Okay, so I tried to snap on here, but there's no, it doesn't even list the DPF on here. Uh, nothing about resetting it or, or even checking it, to be honest. There's no DPF data on this. So we'll have to exit that. I'm going to just shut this down. Okay, after all of that, we didn't need any diagnostic machine. A little bit of a drive around, and it uh, seems to have reset itself. So that's it, all the lights are now gone. So that's it, he can make his way home. So there's a little bit of a story with that was he bring it to over a dozen different garages and nobody could help him out. They didn't know how to fix the issue there for that. And when he brought it back to Toyota, they weren't willing to do it under warranty. Uh, even though he did just have it serviced from them. So that's it. It's all done and see you on the next video.